Hello again, biologists. This is Mr. Kinnear with your second video lesson for S3 Biology, Unit 1, Life on Earth. And this lesson is about interdependence again. So in this lesson, our uh, learning intention is to develop your understanding of interdependence. So uh, success criteria, we're going to know what a food web is. We're going to know definitions, herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, how the effect of the removal of a species has on the rest of a food web. So like I said last week, uh, we're going to start and finish off every lesson with what you need to do. This is also on show by homework. So you've got a few words you need to write down the key definitions for. And you're going to copy out two food webs and you're going to answer questions on each of those two food webs. And at the end of that, you're going to complete a quick quiz on forms. So those are key words that we need to know um, in our food chains and food webs. And we came across the first one. Um, last week. Uh, a producer, that's normally at the start of every single food uh, chain and food web, and that is an organism which produces or creates its own energy. And generally that's a green plant and that's going to produce that energy by photosynthesis. And you guys are consumers, you you buy lots of stuff, you, um, you have to go into shops or online at the moment particularly and uh, get your products. Uh, from things. So you, you don't produce anything, but what you do is you consume, you, you go and buy them. So that kind of uh, relates to the use of the words in our food webs and food chains. So a primary consumer is an organism which is the first organism to eat something else in a food chain to obtain its energy. So it's going to eat a producer. And I'm guessing now you should be able to understand what the next ones are. So a secondary consumer, it consumes a primary consumer to obtain its energy. And a tertiary consumer, well, that's just something that eats a secondary consumer to obtain its energy. So producers, they create their own energy by photosynthesis, then consumers obviously consume another organism. Primary consumer eats a producer and secondary and tertiary then uh, follow those on. So those are definitions you need to understand and write down today. So last week we looked at a food chain. The example was uh, grass, zebra, lion and this is another example we're starting off with grass the grass being um, the producer it produces uh, energy from photosynthesis it's eaten by a rabbit which will be the primary consumer and the rabbits are eaten by foxes which will be the secondary consumer however it's not always that simple if you think about it yourself if you've had your breakfast day or even lunch depending on what time of day it is um, you will have consumed a variety of different products that have been derived from a variety of different organisms. Even if you just had a bacon sandwich, that would have been wheat, that would have been uh, pig, um, you would have had um, tomato sauce maybe, so, so tomato um, on there as well. If you had a cup of tea or some juice, again, there are different organisms in that. Um, so when we join more than one food chain together, we call this a food web. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you a typical woodland ecosystem food web. Uh, your task will be to copy out that food web and then write out all the food chains you can find in the web. And if you can, so if you have colour pens or pencils, choose a different colour for writing out the producers, herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. So I've got producers there in green, but if you don't have green or don't have red for carnivores, it doesn't matter. You can choose your own colour code. Uh, so producers, we've just discussed produces its own food. Herbivores are a type of consumer. Now you should maybe have heard of this word herbivore before, but a herbivore consumes only plant material. A carnivore, now you might shout out that a carnivore eats only meat, but we're going to change that. It consumes only animal material. So for instance, a mosquito is a carnivore. It doesn't eat meat, it consumes or drinks uh, blood. Uh, but that's an animal material, so it does get its nutrients from eating animal materials or consuming animal materials. Um, so that's why we don't say uh, eat meat. And omnivores, well, they eat both of so you guys are omnivores. You might choose to be a vegetarian, but humans basically are omnivores. We are designed to consume both plant and animal materials. So here's your example of a food web from a woodland ecosystem. Um, your job is to write this out in your notes. I have also attached a document version of this on Show My Homework and on 
uh, teams so it's up to you if you have the ability to print or you want to print it out you can do or if you just want to read it off the document to um, to draw it out yourself and again that is up to you the next task is to single out the different food chains that make up this food web so as you can see one example we've got primrose uh, eaten by a vole the vole is potentially eaten by a weasel and then the weasel is eaten uh, by a fox so that would be one uh, food chain within this food web but the primrose is also eaten by the rabbit and the rabbit is also eaten by the fox so the good thing for the fox in this example is that a fox it looks like eats four different things that's a really good thing for the fox just like you having lots of different options uh, for your dinner fox having lots of different options for its dinner it means that if anything happens to the frogs so the frogs die out the fox has three other different options for its tea which means it definitely has a better chance of survival should the, fro the frogs die out so that's a great thing for organisms if they have more than one food source it allows them to survive or a better chance of survival should something happen to one of their food sources so two tasks draw out this food web and then draw the individual food chains that make up this complicated food web. So this is the second food web we'd like you to copy out. We have provided you an electronic version on Teams and Show by Homework. So if you have the ability to print out, you can do, or you can copy it from that document. This is probably likely to be a food web from a lake or a river. Um, most of these organisms do actually live in the pond that we have on school site between science and um, maths, uh, with the exception of perch, pike and stickleback. These are all fish. Um, pike being one of the largest fish that have in the UK waters, probably about a metre, metre and a half long. It is very ferocious, could probably take a finger off uh, if you were catching it whilst fishing. Um, so that's a definitely a huge fish that would not live in our pond and once you've drawn this out we're going to ask you questions that will be on the next slide uh, but what we're effectively asking is what would happen to different populations if one population became extinct so example the first question is saying what would happen to water fleas if algae became extinct now your options are Population to increase, decrease, or stay the same. And then we're asking you to say why. So if you think water flea would decrease, that would probably be quite a good thing because obviously it only eats algae. And if there's no algae to eat, that water flea are going to have a problem. Okay, that might be a bit more complicated as you go through the questions. So that's what we're going to ask you. The first one being, what would what happen to water flea population if the algae became extinct? So these are the five questions we'd like to answer in your daughter based on that um, food web. So effectively, what would happen? And number one is to the population of water fleas if the algae became extinct. Now we said that water fleas, all they eat is algae. So if there's no algae, then the water flea will decrease in numbers. So the answer is going to be decrease, increase, or stay the same to all these questions. And the why to that is that there's no food for the water fleas to have. Now, some of them might be a bit more complicated. Now we think about at home. If you like to have toast for your breakfast or your brother or sister likes to have Cocoa Pops, if there's no bread left, then you can't have your toast for breakfast. So what are you going to do? You're probably going to eat the Cocoa Pops. Now, if you go and then eat all the Cocoa Pops, there's none left for your brother and sister. Your brother or sister is not going to have anything to eat. So we're talking about those kind of relationships. If uh, one animal consumes more um, of an organism because of some impact on the environment, then it might have an impact on something else further down the food web or further down the food chain. So you might have to think about a few more and more complicated relationships in this food web and what i'm going to do is next week i'll provide you a little bit of a video commentary on those questions so you can check back on your work um, next week so that's my video lesson complete for the week um, your tasks as i said earlier what you need to do write down the definitions for those keywords so producer primary second and tertiary consumer the words herbivore carnivore and omnivore would like you to copy out those two food webs although as i said earlier i have 
provided you an electronic version. So if you want to print them out and have the ability to, then you can do. And then answer the questions on each of the two food webs. Uh, so the first one, it was write down the different food chains in that food web. And on the second one, it was write down what happens uh, to organisms if something else happens. Um, and then after that, complete the quick quiz on form. So that will be attached to your show my homework task. It'll also be again on Teams as well. So that's us for this week. Hope you've enjoyed your second lesson for S3 Biology. Any problems, drop me a line on Teams and I'll speak to you then. Cheers, bye.